Hello class, welcome to lecture two in METR 2023. And during the course of this lecture, we'll introduce something called the pressure gradient force. We're gonna start adding to our atmospheric equations of motion, adding some of the forces to it. But uh, before we do that, I do wanna go ahead and briefly recount some of the stuff that we talked about in lecture one, and also give you guys an exercise to sort of work through just to check your understanding and make sure that you uh, more or less understand what's going on in the previous lecture. So just to start off with, we'll review what we talked about last time. So using Newton's second law, we derived our atmospheric equation of motion to model how uh, our atmospheric wind changes in three dimensions. And we also can break that down into three individual components. So the X component or the zonal component is given by this. So the local change in U, which is the zonal component of the wind, with time is equal to the momentum advection term plus the sum of all the mass normalized forces that are acting on it in the x direction. So all the forces acting on the x direction will influence the change in the zonal wind here. And similarly with the y component or the meridional component, the change in that wind is also equal to this momentum advection term plus all the mass normalized forces that are acting in the y direction. And then last but certainly not least, this vertical uh, this vertical component, the change in the vertical wind with time is equal to the moment, the uh, advection of vertical momentum plus all of the mass normalized forces that are acting in the vertical direction. And also something that's kind of important to keep in mind is the difference between a Lagrangian and Eulerian framework. So in a Lagrangian framework, we use the total derivative, and it's the lowercase d here on the left-hand side which accounts for pretty much everything. The Eulerian term is the local change. Remember, Lagrangian's for following something that's in motion, and the Eulerian term is for a fixed point, and that's represented by this partial derivative here for a fixed point. And then the Lagrangian term is equal to the Eulerian plus all the external forces acting on it, and one such external force which we have to account for in the atmosphere, and pretty much every physical quantity that we work with is the advection term, which is a tendency from for the fluid to move, uh, say, higher temperatures or lower temperatures around, or higher pressures or lower pressures around. It's just a tendency for the wind to move stuff around, and that's just something that we have to account for in the atmosphere. So to sort of check your understanding on how all that works, I'll go ahead and give you this exercise to do. So suppose the temperature in Norman, Oklahoma is 298 Kelvin at noon and the wind is southerly at 10 meters per second. There is a temperature gradient directed toward the south which has a magnitude of 0 0.025 kelvins per kilometer. Radiational heating of one kelvin per hour is also occurring. Using this information, predict what the temperature in Norman will be at 3 p.m. So I'll go ahead and ask you to go ahead and pause the video, take about 10 or 15 minutes and attempt to work through this exercise. And then if you either get stuck or you feel like you have an answer that you're comfortable with, then you can go ahead and resume the video and you'll see the worked out solution to follow. So I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video and do that. All right, so now I'll go ahead and put up the solution and uh, hopefully uh, this is more or less what your work uh, looks like, and hopefully you get the same answer. So one thing that I'm always a one thing that I'm a big uh, advocate for is drawing a very detailed diagram, and you're going to see why in just a minute. So uh, one good place to start might be to put a little point on a piece of paper and then draw all the put a visual representation of all the information on it. So one such visual rep representation is the fact that there is a temperature gradient directed toward the south. So the temperature gradient goes from north to south, something like that. And you may recall from the definition of the gradient itself, the gradient points from lower values of your scalar to higher values of your scalar. So if the temperature gradient points toward the south, that means you have to have lower values of temperature to the north and higher values of temperature to the south. So that means in the case of temperature, the air to the north is cooler and the air to the south is warmer. And the other piece of information contained within the problem is the fact that there is a southerly wind. Remember, southerly means blowing from south to north. So that means the wind would look something like this, blowing from south to north. And right away, before you even start working with any equations, before you start plugging in any numbers to any equations, by drawing this detailed diagram, you can get a very good idea of what sort of answer that you can expect. So you've got the wind blowing from warmer air to cooler air, so you expect the wind to be transporting warmer air northward. 
but also you've got radiational heating occurring, so your end result should be a positive change in temperature as you go from the noon hour to 3 p.m. So that's a three hour temperature change. Just based on the diagram alone, before you work with any equations, you expect the temperature at Norman to increase by some number, and that some number is what we're going to go ahead and calculate. So starting off with our uh, starting off with our equation here, relating the Lagrangian term to the Eulerian term, the only external forcing that we have to worry about is the radiational heating, but one of the things about this equation is you can actually absorb that into this dt dt term on the left-hand side. But since we are solving for the temperature changed at a fixed point, we need to isolate this Eulerian term. So we have to do a little algebra to get this Eulerian term all by itself, and then that involves taking this term and moving it to the left-hand side of the equation to get a result that looks like this. So we get dt partial t partial t is equal to dt dt, and we're going to go ahead and use this to represent our radiational heating, and then minus this advection term right here. So if we expand out this dot product, we'll get a result that looks something like this. So you get minus u times dt dx, minus v times dt dy, minus w times dt dz. And if we look at this diagram, we can see that there are some terms that we can cancel out. So if we look at the temperature gradient vector itself, you can see that uh, you can see that it doesn't have any component in the y direction and it doesn't have any component in the z direction. So we can immediately eliminate both of those terms. And also we can eliminate the term just by the fact that the wind is, has a pure meridional component. It has no zonal component and it has no vertical component. So we can el immediately eliminate two terms to make our life a lot easier. And so we're just simply left with this equation. So the local change in temperature with time is equal to the Lagrangian term, which is uh, which we can consider to be the radiational heating term, minus this advection term, v, the uh, meridional component of the wind times the meridional component of the temperature gradient. So just carrying on, on to the next page. Now that we've got an equation that we can solve for, we can go ahead and start plugging in numbers. So we start, so we plug in the radiational heating term into this. We get one Kelvin per hour minus the wind, which is 10 meters per second, times the magnitude of the temperature gradient. And since the gradient points to the south, uh, that is in fact a negative term. And oh, I'm sorry, this should be yeah, sh this should be a positive term. Or excuse me, yeah, this should be a negative term here. There should be a negative sign. My apologies for that. So plugging that in, we get uh, this should be a, uh, again, there should be a negative sign out in front because the temperature gradient points to the south. So this should actually be negative 0 0.025 kelvins per kilometer uh, multiplied by positive 10 meters per second. So that should be, this right here should be a plus sign. And then we also have to do some unit conversions to uh, get this in uh, some consistent units. So we convert the kilometers to meters and we convert the hour to seconds. That should be over here. And then our time increment, which we can represent with this little delta t, we put that over here to get uh, this result. And if we plug that all into a calculator, we should get that the change in temperature itself is 5.7 kelvins, which if we, we also have to keep in mind that the temperature that we started with was 298 kelvin. So just using the fact that the change in the temperature is equal to the final minus the initial, we know what the initial is and we know what the change is, so we can calculate what the final temperature is. So we get that the final temperature is 5.7 Kelvin plus 298 Kelvin, which is in fact 303.7 Kelvins. So hopefully you got that as the answer. Again, there should be a negative sign out here. My apologies for that mistake. This should be so this should be a plus sign and this should be a plus sign. And that's another nice thing about this diagram that you can have is you can use that to check to make sure your answer makes sense. So we expected a positive value, a positive change in temperature. And if we uh, don't lose track of our negative signs, that should be the answer that we get. We should get a positive increase in temperature. So hopefully you got that answer. And if you do, awesome. Uh, if not, please make sure that you understand the solution. Again, just keep in mind that correction I articulated, negative sign should be here. So. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that all worked out for you, and I will see you all in the next segment where we will actually start introducing the pressure gradient force.